This is the only man-made structure that's visible from satellites orbiting the planet. It's the Great Wall of China. I'm David Suzuki, and tonight, the nature of things brings you a special first-hand look at the science, technology, and medicine in the most populous nation on Earth. Cathay, whose ancient splendors boast of a civilization in which science and technology flowered long before the Industrial Revolution, opens a door to the West. What will they make of what they find without? What will we make of what we find within? The long wall of 10,000 Li, an engineering triumph. Begun three millennia ago, the wall was completed two centuries before the birth of Christ, at a cost that is said to be the life of one slave for every stone. Its completion signaled the first unification of China under one powerful emperor and rebuffed the barbaric Huns of Mongolia for over a millennium. Now tourists tread the wall that lies like the backbone of some immense dragon. The Summer Palace in Peking, built only a hundred years ago with a technology centuries old. The people, a thousand million human beings, a quarter of the world's population, China's greatest natural resource, yet the major deterrent to achieving a modern industrialized society. A thousand years ago, the forebearers of these children invented paper, printing, gunpowder, and the compass to guide huge ships on long voyages of exploration. Extravagant gates to a palace lake. That technological lead was squandered by emperors who indulged in splendid monuments. Chinese technology froze at a medieval level, while Europe, then Japan and America, exploded into the Industrial Revolution and explored radical ideas, democracy, capitalism, communism. A moment of fun, a time to reflect, fenced in by a language barrier and my ignorance of their history and culture, I could only wonder what are their dreams, their hopes, their fears, their thoughts. Today these mute reminders of an imperial past are just another backdrop for a pretty picture. These fabulous marble beasts guard the route to the tombs of the Ming emperors. They once symbolized the breadth of the Ming empire, from the jungles of Yunnan to the deserts of Mongolia. Once forbidden to all but the imperial retinue, today peasants casually pass them by. The Forbidden City, self-imposed prison of the Ming emperors in the heart of Peking. Opulent splendor, 9,000 centrally heated rooms were completed 500 years ago at the height of Chinese culture. Bizarre beasts, the product of Chinese technology turned inward, away from foreign trade and exploration 
while Europeans explored the earth and discovered America in the search for Cathay. China was content to coast on its traditional achievements. Why do some babies develop faster than others? Is there something a mother can do? What makes some babies better prepared to do well in school? Are there things a mother can do to help? What makes some babies happier than others? Parents Magazine gives today's young mother all the answers she needs. And right now you can receive one full year of parents for only $10.95 by calling 1-800-228-5100. That's 1-800-228-5100. There are no lower prices anywhere, and you'll save $7 off the newsstand price. Every day, a mother has to make important decisions that directly affect her baby's life. She has to know what to do, what not to do, and Parents Magazine can help. In Parents, you'll find the answers that could make all the difference. So don't wait another day. Subscribe to Parents by calling 1-800-228-5100. That's 1-800-228-5100. No trip to China is complete without a visit to an acupuncture clinic. This one is in the Siwa Hospital in Peking. Here they treat ailments ranging from damage to nerves and muscle to heart disease and paralysis. Acupuncture has been practiced in China for 3,000 years, yet until recently has been dismissed as nonsense by most Western doctors. For facial paralysis, needles are inserted at precisely defined positions. Deafness caused by nerve damage is treated by electroacupuncture. The needles are charged to four volts and inserted deep into muscle nerve bundles that detect pressure. It is felt the nerves are stimulated to fire by the needle's vibrations. It's not understood how acupuncture works, so in studying it, we may gain new insights into the functions of the body and the brain. This woman is being treated for chronic nausea. Acupuncture is often administered along with massage or a strange bit of alchemy called moxibustion. Moxibustion involves a pot of herbs smoldering over acupuncture points so that heat and fumes penetrate the gauze and skin to provide relief. It may seem like the hocus-pocus of witch doctors, but then so is anything we don't understand. And perhaps what matters is whether we believe in it. A needle in the foot helps to relieve a pinched spinal nerve. The pain-killing effects of acupuncture are proven beyond a doubt and it is accepted as treatment for arthritis and rheumatism, diseases which still baffle Western doctors. The value of acupuncture is that for the Chinese, it works. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. This woman is wide awake and having her thyroid removed. The only anesthetic she has are four needles stuck in her arms. She walked into this room and climbed onto the table all by herself. For Western science and medicine, the most astonishing use of acupuncture is for anesthesia. Here in the Shengli Hospital in Shantung Province, surgery is performed routinely on patients under acupuncture. It all began with the insertion of two needles into each arm. Accurate positioning of the needles is done according to ancient charts which trace the acutracts. Acupoints, where the acutracts intersect, 
identify the location of nerve bundles in the muscles, but as they sense pressure, not pain, the technique does not simply substitute one pain for another. Three thousand years ago, the Chinese stumbled on a way to trigger the body's pain-killing mechanisms before the pain begins. In half an hour, the needles have their anesthetic effects, which last for an hour after it is stopped. Recently, Western scientists have discovered that the brain secretes compounds called endorphins, which kill pain. Acupuncture stimulates the release of endorphins. The needles have had their effect, and the surgeon is ready. Not a flinch or sign of pain. There weren't any Western anesthetics in the room, but they are used in 90% of all operations in China. Acupuncture is particularly suited to operations in superficial areas and the upper part of the body. Bleeding is minimal and blood pressure normal. The patient's condition was remarkable. She chatted with the nurse and only rarely grimaced briefly the way I do when a dentist gets a little close to a nerve. Tumorous thyroid comes out intact. The operation is soon over. No cauterizing of blood vessels. Surgeons and nurses were trained right here in the Shengli Hospital, which serves an oil field and farming community of 26,000. In the next operating room, a woman was having a lung removed, again under acupuncture. The advantages of anesthesia with acupuncture are enormous. It's not nearly as traumatic physiologically or psychologically as Western anesthetics. During and after the operation, there are fewer complications of nausea, unexpected reaction, or bleeding. Once in her own room, this patient got off the table and climbed into bed under her own steam. I'm Dr. Arguline, and this message is for the physicians in our audience. It's difficult to keep up with the medical literature today, so Cable Health Network has started a new program to make that job easier for you, Physician's Journal Update. We review the current medical literature, interview leading researchers, and cover important medical news. If you're a physician and you're having difficulty keeping up with all the information, join us for Physician's Journal Sunday morning at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, 7 Pacific. Why do five and a half million readers turn to Golf Digest magazine for instruction that works? Some of the best step-by-step -step lessons in print from playing editors like Nicholas, Watson, Pate, Irwin, Kite, Lopez, and from the entire teaching staff of Golf Digest's world-famous instruction schools, where golfers willingly pay $1,800 a week to become better golfers. If it's your objective to become a better golfer, call this toll-free number. 
To order a full year of Golf Digest, 12 authoritative issues for just $9.97, almost half off the regular cover price. Order now, and you'll receive free Golf Digest's 20 Ways to Hit It Farther. 48 pages packed with tips from the pros to help give you more distance off the tee. To raise the level of your game and lower your handicap, let Golf Digest make this your year in golf. Call toll-free 800-453-8508. 800-453-8508. This is where all the herbal medicines are prepared for an entire hospital in Peking. Here in China, folk medicine has evolved over thousands of years. Today, coupled with computers and electronic instruments, traditional medicine provides health care for millions of city people. I might add that much of it is simply common sense preventive practice, such as eliminating disease-carrying pests. A look at Chinese medicine provides us with a different perspective with which we can compare our own practices. This is how a traditional doctor's prescription is made up. It's a Rube Goldberg assemblage of people and machines. Each ailment has a specific remedy based on a large variety of botanical material from China's jungles, deserts, and mountains. It's typed into a computer which relays the information to a robot dispensing machine of bottles which delivers the basic ingredients. For the more exotic materials required for each individualized order, technicians locate and measure out the ingredients. Obviously, approximations are good enough. The origin of China's herbal medicines is lost in antiquity. Many were discovered by primitive tribes long since extinct. Others were brought in by traders from Africa and the Indies. The Chinese take herbal medicines seriously. They make distinctions between Chinese and Western medicines, not as old and new, both are modern, but as traditional and Western. These prescriptions are based on thousands of years of folklore, observations, testing. Each plate is bagged to be brewed as one day's treatment. Some, no doubt, are superstitious nonsense, but it is worth remembering that many of our own drugs, quinine, aspirin, digitalis, curare, cocaine, were once the stock and trade of witch doctors. Tai Chi means the supreme ultimate. To Western eyes, this slow, graceful exercise devised by a Taoist priest 500 years ago is like a beautiful ballet. To the Chinese, it is a part of a program of preventive medicine. In setting the whole body in motion, qi, the energy that flows along acupuncture lines, is released. The body is stretched, pulled apart and back together without incurring the poisons that build up with breathlessness. It's 5 a.m. on the Bund, Shanghai's famous boulevard along the Wangpu River. Ordinary people gather in streets and parks all over China for their morning exercises. It pays off. The Chinese have a low standard of living with the bare necessities, yet average life expectancy exceeds 60 years, a striking contrast to any other comparable country.
This not so young man was once an acrobat and has maintained his agility and his audience. This girl practices Wu Shu, Chinese boxing, under the demanding eye of her father. Vigorous self-defense and gentle exercise, components of the process that keeps the Chinese alive and well. If you're like me, you care about what's in the medicines you give your family. So before I buy a health care product, I check it out in the physician's desk reference for non-prescription drugs. This PDR is the book that 240,000 doctors use for information on non-prescription drugs, the ones you buy without a prescription in drugstores and supermarkets. It has all the information you want to know about a product, what it should be used for, what's in it, how it works, dosage, and a lot more. It also gives you any warnings or precautions. There's a section that shows products in color, so you can be absolutely sure of what you're buying. And the PDR has four separate indexes to help you find a product, even if you don't know the name. There's a guide to self-treatment for common health problems and a list of poison control center phone numbers. I can't imagine a more important book to have in the home. Now you can have the Physician's Desk Reference for non-prescription drugs in your home for only $19.95. Send check or money order to PDR, P.O. Box 98008, Department A, Atlanta, Georgia, 30359. Or for faster service, use your credit card and call this toll-free number, 1-800-331-1000. If you're not satisfied within 10 days, simply return it and your money will be refunded. Call this number now and order, one 800 Three three one one thousand, and order your PDR now. The wheat is in, and donkey carts grown with straw to be stacked for cattle feed and kitchen fuel in the winter. Agriculture and the peasant are the heart and soul of China. The peasants are working around the clock in a race with the coming monsoon rains. Time seems frozen. Clothes and implements like those used centuries before. Four out of every five people in China live on rural communes. 800 million people, over 600 times as many as Canadian farmers for just five times as much land. muscles are the main power source and everywhere men and women work side by side we saw very few machines in the country it's extremely difficult to make comparisons between our two countries after the failure of the Great Leap Forward in 1959, China abolished the State Statistical Bureau, so we have few figures. Nevertheless, the temptation is irresistible. Aided by little more than the simplest farm machinery and very little chemical fertilizers, Chinese peasants still grow as many tons of food per hectare as Canadian farmers. This is largely due to a climate that permits two crops of wheat and three of rice a year in some regions. But it also reflects a different kind of efficiency.
Canada's farmers are few in number, but with heavy use of machinery, fertilizers, pesticides, high yield plants and large fields, they harvest enormous crops. But it's energy expensive per ton of food. With the Chinese, human power is cheap and plentiful, and with a minimum of technology and energy, crop yields are high. While starvation has been banished through more equitable and efficient distribution of food, production has not kept up to population growth, and there is still hunger in some areas. In spite of intensive agriculture, China remains a food-importing nation, much of it from North America. These women are picking tea leaves. Everywhere we've been in China, one of the first rituals we observe is to sit down over a cup of hot green tea. It is said that some of the finest teas in China are grown right here in the Hangzhou area. They say in Hangzhou that this dragon well tea is the finest. Legend has it that Emperor Shen Nung brought tea to China in 2737 BC. The tea bushes are picked about 30 times between April and October. Like wine tasters, Chinese tea experts grade the leaves into 16 categories. Tea from the Orient reduced European consumption of alcohol and was served in fine porcelain called China. On the way to making black tea, these leaves are wilted in a warmer that stimulates enzyme and microbial action. On a heated surface, the leaves are bruised, shredded, and rolled to break down cell walls and begin the fermentation process. The tannin formed is bitter and pungent, and the caffeine gives a lift. The final drying stage. Hand drying is reserved for green tea. The finest is the first pick in April when buds are plump and leaves small. At 80 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, then 30 degrees for half an hour, fermentation is prevented. Hour after hour, each person produces a small quantity of Dragonwell tea, selling for a handsome $40 a kilo. Like all of China's collectives, the Xiongfeng Tea Brigade is diversified in its crops. By growing their own wheat, they are more self-sufficient and we're now learning that mixed crops are less susceptible to insects and disease. <laughs> Chaff is separated from wheat grains in a simple, ingenious, hand-operated machine. Electricity has been brought to most of China's rural areas, but the old ways hang on. And where labor is cheap and plentiful, why not? This health break is brought to you by the Cable Health Network. Remember how your mom warned you not to pack any tuna sandwiches in that picnic lunch because the mayonnaise would spoil in the sun? Right? Wrong? I'll tell you why in just a moment. Charlie Rose cares enough to get you close. And we want to feel that we can risk 
without being rejected. With revealing questions. Why is it that men are frightened by truth mm -hmm. and women emotionally need it? And honest answers. Have you ever cried? Of course I have, this week. Uh -huh. Let the Charlie Rose Show take you to the heart of the matter. Weekdays at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central, and 9.30 Pacific. Here on Cable Health Network. It turns out that mayonnaise has been getting a bad rap all these years. According to a study done by the University of Wisconsin, mayonnaise in salads actually helps reduce spoilage. They prepared ham salad and chicken salad three ways. No mayonnaise, with half the amount of mayonnaise, and a regular amount of mayonnaise. And they found mayonnaise is an unfavorable medium for the growth and survival of most bacteria which can lead to food poisoning. This is largely due to its high acidity. But Mother was right. When using mayonnaise, keep the food out of direct sunlight and get rid of the leftovers if they've been out at a picnic site for over several hours. So next time you go on a picnic, bring it along. From an airplane, the most striking feature in the Chinese landscape is the intricate network of waterways. Canals often provide the major means of transportation to isolated villages, and at a more leisurely pace than the highways. The Grand Canal is a bustling waterway that was built over 1,300 years ago. It was a magnificent achievement. Dug entirely by hand, it spans 1,800 kilometers and links the Yangtze River to Peking. Besides its importance in transportation, the canal provides water that has opened up hundreds of thousands of acres to farming. Begun in 589 AD, the Grand Canal was completed by millions of laborers 21 years later. It is said that five out of every six died on the job. The canal statistics are impressive. An average 33 meters wide, two to three deep, and lined with masonry to prevent erosion. Today's boats differ little from those that used to carry salt, grain, and tributes of silk 1,300 years ago. Most of them are junks, one of the sturdiest and most seaworthy of sailing vessels. Many of the junks are run by families who live and work on them. The children pitch in as soon as they're old enough to be released from their safety straps. These are true boat people, from cradle to grave on the water. It may seem freer than urban or farm life, but it's a cramped and unsanitary way of life with the same relentless monotony, as well as quotas to fulfill like any other job. A junk can be handled with smaller crews than Western vessels of similar size. It has watertight compartments, is steered by a rudder, and guided by compass, all Chinese inventions. Dozens of dams actually control the direction of water flow through turbines that operate both ways. So water can be diverted to demanding industries in the north, dumped into the Yangtze during floods, or shunted into irrigation ditches in the summer. But the fish, which provide much of the protein in this area, are also cared for. Small streams with strategically placed concrete blocks where the fish can rest, allow them to go freely around the dams. Heavy traffic and larger boats required more room, so a new Grand Canal was built in modern times, running parallel to the old. It's all part of a total water system for transportation, electricity, flood control, industrial use, fishing, and farming. Oh. 
water in large quantities must also be provided for the relentless demands of rice. A water buffalo is built for this exhausting job and is matched in stamina by its master. Who needs tractors? It has been said, of all claims of the Maoist regime, the most impressive is that it succeeded in feeding everyone where famine stalked for 30 centuries. But it was due more to equalizing distribution than by modernizing farming. Rice is to Asia what wheat is to the West. China produces 130 million tons annually, three times its own and five times Canada's wheat production. Like crops everywhere, these rice fields are fertilized with night soil. It takes large quantities of energy to make chemical fertilizers. A billion human beings produce a lot of manure for free. It's carefully collected and sterilized by fermentation before use. It makes ecological and economic sense, and no doubt we too will turn to such recycling in the future. If it's been a while since you've had a health checkup, why not have one right now? Not a physical but a test of your health knowledge. Just get a pencil and paper and see how you do in this true-false test from the Harvard Medical School Health Letter. Everyone needs a medical checkup every year. True or false? Wet feet cause head colds. Gold injections can help arthritis. Interferon cures cancer. Chocolate causes acne. When you subscribe to the Harvard Medical School Health Letter, You'll learn the answers to questions like those. You'll receive the latest, most important health information each month in a concise six-page newsletter. The health letter is edited by doctors Timothy Johnson, Stephen Goldfinger, and a select board of 16 Harvard specialists, so you know it's accurate. And it's written for you. There's no medical jargon, no technical articles, just solid, factual health news, reported and interpreted in plain English. Now let's see how well you did on our test. Everyone needs a medical checkup every year. False. Wet feet cause head colds. False. Gold injections can help arthritis. True. Interferon cures cancer. False. Chocolate causes acne. False. Did any of these answers surprise you? Then you'll enjoy adding to your health knowledge by subscribing to the Harvard Medical School Health Letter. Call this number now to subscribe. A full year of the health letter, 12 issues, is just $15. And you can charge it to your MasterCard or Visa. And when you subscribe, you'll also receive this free gift with your payment, the soft cover copy of the Harvard Medical School Health Letter book. Call now and start your subscription to the Harvard Medical School Health Letter today. At this commune, we were invited into one of the homes. Xiao <laughs> Xie Yu takes charge of the meal. Here, four generations live in a clean but cramped home. Xiao's father-in-law, Hung Dang Chang, is head of the household. Kung's wife has bound feet, a practice which was finally stamped out in the 1930s. This is a weekend when everyone is home. During the week, some work and live in Shanghai, but they pool all their earnings and function as a unit. Dinner is simple. Onions, rice, a few scraps of meat. It's cooked in woks, set in a fuel-efficient stove that burns twigs and straw with the aid of a bellows. By Chinese standards, this family's not poor. 
gross income, including pensions, is $370 a month. Rent, food, and clothing are cheap, and they are able to save about $10 a month at 2.5% interest. Bamboo is so versatile and useful, it's difficult to imagine Chinese culture without it. Bamboo grows so rapidly, you can watch it with the naked eye. It's so strong, it's used in place of metal in huge scaffolds everywhere. Bamboo has straight grain, so it can be split into very fine strips for basket wear. Yet if picked when young and tender, it tastes delicious. And of course, the graceful form of bamboo is a favorite subject of artists everywhere. It's small wonder the Chinese have such reverence for this very special plant. A gift heaven sent, a grass whose familiar joints grace countless Chinese brush paintings. Although bamboo species are found on every continent but Europe and Antarctica, it's used most extensively in Southeast Asia. They range in size from field grass to giants 40 meters tall and a third of a meter across. These huge baskets will store wheat and rice. The high strength to weight ratio is the key to bamboo's versatility. This bamboo scoop will be used to winnow chaff from wheat. There are well over a thousand different applications for bamboo. This is a job that requires skill and patience, qualities that are not confined to the young or the physically fit. So crafts such as these enable older people and the disabled to contribute productively to the commune. commune is not just a small group of farmers. This one has 25,000 people, so their needs are numerous and diverse. The commune may specialize in certain products, which are then exchanged with others at very low cost. For farmers, sickles are needed in large numbers to hand cut wheat and rice. Across the lane, woodcutters turn out barrels, pots, and bowls. This is the birth of a wash basin. I couldn't help reflecting on the differences in our outlooks. In Canada, we regard every child as a potential prime minister, a person with limitless opportunity. Here on a Chinese commune, there's no time for such illusory dreaming. Life's expectations and limits are simple and clear. This is not mass production as we know it. This is not cost or speed efficient. It is a relic of a way of life extinct in industrialized nations.
If you're thinking of plunging into something new... I think I'm going to take up a little rock climbing. I beg your pardon? Rock climbing. Remember, there's a right way and a wrong way to get started. The problems that you're in for is the fact that this calf muscle is going to tighten up. Dr. Alan Selner shows you how to get into shape and how to stay that way. Number one, it makes you feel better. Find out what you've been doing wrong and how to make it right. Go out and try something new and have a great time. A guide for the weekend okay. athlete here on Cable Health Network. It's late. You're worried because your loved one has been driving all day to make it home by tonight. Your big concern, did he fall asleep while driving? Now ease your mind with a gift of the one and only Sleeper Beeper, an inexpensive micro-technology device that alerts a driver when he nods off to sleep. Sleeper Beeper is worn on the ear and sounds an alarm. When the wearer's head nods past a certain point, when the alarm sounds, this should signal for him to stop and rest until he is alert enough to proceed safely. It's the perfect gift for your commuting college student, for those long holiday trips with the family, for your sportsman who gets up early for a long day, for the person who travels for a living. It's for anyone who must stay alert. Order today and receive a free handy holder. Fits anywhere to hold your beeper and remind you to drive safely. To order, use your credit card and call 1-800-543-1300. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $2.50 shipping and handling to Sleeper Beeper, Box 1555, Nashville, Tennessee, 37202. From jade and shell carvings to lacquer works, Chinese crafts are famous throughout the world. But these superb products involve more than just the technical skill of patient artisans. They reflect the accumulation through trial and error of a lot of scientific knowledge, from the structure and properties of minerals to the chemistry of dyes and lacquers. And they all come together in these breathtaking works of art. These elaborate lacquer carvings have their evolutionary roots in the practical crafts we've just seen on the commune. This is a 2,000-year-old art whose basic techniques are still kept secret from the West. Lacquer is a clear resin that is then colored with dyes. From 20 to 200 coats are applied to a wood base, creating a tough, shiny surface like plastic that is easily carved without flaking. The brilliant red hue in this lacquer comes from the lac insect, the crimson cochineal beetle. This old craftsman took out his masterpiece with a mother of pearl inlay to put on the finishing touches. Like all of the crafts we saw, the designs are elaborate but stultified in classical patterns established centuries before. It's a peculiar tribute to the Chinese mind, which developed gunpowder for fireworks whereas the Western mind recognized its potential for destruction. But all of this painstaking work is dedicated to products which will never be purchased or used by the vast majority of Chinese. screens was mixed with soot to produce the jet black surface that sets off the gold. It's intriguing to wonder how people develop the complex series of steps required to produce such elaborate objects. We are just learning the molecular basis for many colorful dyes, what makes them fade, the best solvents and adhesives. Yet without this science, ancient craftsmen produced works of art which retain their luster and brilliance for centuries. Dung Zheng Chang is 71 years old. It will take him eight months to complete this jade masterpiece. To the Chinese, jade is the fairest of stones. Dung's daughter, Wei Zheng, works at his side, so he has stayed on past his retirement to train her. Every day, 
Dung walks to work from his home, 12 kilometers away. Like many young people, Wei Zheng lives in a dormitory beside the factory. It takes seven years of learning stone intimately before anyone is allowed to begin cutting a complete object. We were told some of the finest jade they use comes from British Columbia. Red coral from Japan is shaped with the same techniques as jade. This delicate vase took 85 working days to complete and will bring in badly needed foreign currency. For over 3,000 years, jade objects have been carved in China. As we've seen again and again, today's artisans use techniques, even designs, that have hardly changed for centuries. Her name is Yashwante Jayishri. She lives in India. Her name is Monica Moreno, and she lives in Bogota, Colombia. And they're the children we sponsor through Foster Parents Plan. Hello, I'm Steve Allen. Then I must be Jane Meadows. I hope so. You know our foster children write us lots of letters. Letters that share with us the real meaning of love and caring. We feel that sponsoring these children is one of the most important investments we've ever made. Absolutely. An investment in love. Love that can change their lives. Yes. There's nothing that comes close to the feeling of helping a child in need. And now you can have that feeling by calling Foster Parents Plan. Please call the number on your screen. And call now, won't you? Because this number connects you to love and to a child who really needs you now. You may choose to sponsor a boy or a girl in any country where Foster Parents Plan is working. And you'll receive a complete personal history of your foster child, along with his or her photograph. With Foster Parents Plan, it costs so little to give so much. Just 72 cents a day can provide food, medical care, and education for a child like Joseph or Magdalena. You know, you can't hold her in your arms, but you can touch her life. There's an extra reason to call right now, because if you join us now, your foster child will receive an extra $5. It's a special gift from the Foster Family Fund created by foster parents like us. It can provide a new dress, books, medicine, or even extra food. Please call the number on your screen. Call now so your foster child can receive this extra gift. Foster Parents Plan. It's the investment of a lifetime for you and for a child like Monica or Yashwante. You know, we've been foster parents for over 30 years. I hope you'll decide to join us today. Please. Foster Parents Plan. Please call now and join us in making the investment of a lifetime. The lifetime of a child. School children. China's precious lifeline out of the traditional ways into the future. From early grades, children in China are being drilled in science, math, and English. Like kids everywhere, they can be noisy, active, and mischievous. But in the classroom, their intensity and obedience are impressive. We've been told at this model school in Hangzhou that the abacus is no longer being taught because it's too old-fashioned. It's a pity. But it indicates how anxious the Chinese are to modernize. More people speak Chinese than any other language. But it's a polyglot of dozens of dialects, as different from each other as English and German. While the characters sound different in each dialect, the meaning of each symbol is the same. Chinese literature is the world's oldest, beginning 35 centuries ago. Yet the symbols have changed so little, over half remain the same today as they were then. The brush gives calligraphy its beauty and nuances of thickness. 
Long before they graduate, these students will have mastered four to seven thousand characters, the number required to read a newspaper. For centuries, until 1900, China was the most literate nation on earth. 30% of its men and 2% of the women could read and write. After the Communist Revolution of 1949, the government set out to conquer illiteracy. In 1956, the characters were simplified by cutting the number of strokes in half and making literacy much easier. In one generation, the regime claimed to have achieved 100% literacy. Whatever the truth, the achievements have been spectacular. The gulf of language, history, and culture between North America and the People's Republic of China is enormous. While we were there, we had full-time interpreters, traveled in air-conditioned buses, and ate in foreign people's restaurants, hardly conditions to experience the real China. And if there are several different versions of Canada, there must be dozens of versions of China. Nevertheless, our lack of knowledge about China allowed us to see things through relatively objective, unbiased eyes. We simply filmed things as we saw them. Majestic, breathtaking, just a few words to describe the views many of us have seen overlooking the Grand Canyon. On Wednesday, experience this great American wonder from a very different perspective. Join a travel expedition aboard a Colorado River boat on the American Adventure. That's Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 8.30 Central, and 6.30 Pacific, here on Cable Health Network.